you and your friends are trapped in a prison and forced to play the world's most dangerous escape room. You'll have to solve every deadly puzzle, survive being tortured by sadistic gangsters, and risk your life to escape before the time runs out. When one mistake will kill everyone you love, what do you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the deadly puzzles in No Escape. This man is on a one-way ticket to hell. Cole here is a world-famous vlogger, and his friends have arranged for a very special trip to Moscow, but he has no idea what to expect. They've kept everything a secret from him, and now he wants answers. Asking them what they've got planned, he's finally told that he will be playing the world's most exclusive escape room. This guy's up for any challenge, but he has no idea that this will destroy his life. Dash here has made a deal with one of the richest playboys in Russia who's paying for their whole trip and making all the arrangements for their big surprise. Arriving in Moscow, his friend Dash hops into the baggage claim carousel and gets busted by airport security. Cole here tries to negotiate with them, but they won't let him go. That's when this man walks up and just by showing them his passport, scares the men away. This is Alexei, and he's wasting no time making an impression. He takes them back to their lavish hotel, but they don't stay long as Alexei here decides he's going to introduce them to some Russian culture. He takes them to a seedy back alley guarded by bouncers, and he's going to show them the night of their lives. Okay, while everyone here is thinking about how wasted they should get, I'm thinking about where this guy gets all his money. Russia has a very high level of corruption, which makes a great environment for organized crime. A great example is in 2016, when the police raided an apartment where they found $123 million of cash. This apartment belonged to Colonel Dmitry Zakrychenko, the head of the police force's anti-corruption division who was holding the money for an organized crime group. Now at the airport, these security guards took one look at this kid's passport and nearly pissed themselves in fear. With that kind of power, we need to find out who this guy is before we realize we're in over our heads. Regardless, if you're a vlogger who's letting your friends make secret business deals with Russian millionaires on your behalf, you may need to rethink your life choices. Going inside, they see it's one hell of a private club. They start knocking down way too many shots and Dash here makes a new friend. As he starts the live stream, Cole here asks Alexei about the escape room. The man tells him it's unlike anything he's ever seen, and he's about to learn more when they're interrupted by some fans. He takes a moment to enjoy his fame, but his friend looks behind him and realizes something is wrong. That's when Cole turns around and sees his girlfriend getting harassed by these gangsters. He rushes over to fight them off, but he's quickly overpowered. Alexei steps in and pulls out a knife, but they refuse to let go of his friends. This gangster pulls out his gun and is about to shoot them when Alexei's drivers step in. They take control of the situation, and the man lets them know he's is going to get his revenge later. Leaving the club, the driver confirms that those men were high-ranking mafia, but all this guy can think about is if he caught it on camera, and his friends are not happy about this at all. Okay, they have every right to be upset. Unfortunately, this kind of thinking is a quick way to lose your friends and alienate people. He was too distracted by his fangirls to listen to anyone else. And if this behavior escalates into more dangerous habits, he'll pull everyone else down with him. So if I were these guys, I'd slowly remove myself from his circle before this gets any worse. The next day, Cole and his girlfriend are being chauffeured and they want to do some sightseeing, but the driver locks the car doors, refusing to let them leave. It's strange behavior, but after some convincing, he gives them cash and lets them out. After exploring the city, they stop for drinks at a bar. Cole uses the cash he was given to pay the bill when a strange red card falls to the floor. The bartender comes to tell them their friend Alexei has already paid for their drinks and his driver is waiting. He then bends down and picks up the red card, handing it back to Cole. They're about to leave when his girlfriend stops him, warning that if the escape room gets too intense, he can back out. He assures her that he's ready for anything, and they leave, but he'll soon be wishing he took her advice. Okay, this is getting creepy. The driver didn't want us walking around the city on our own, and Alexei already knows where we are. It's clear that they're trying to control us, and we need to find out why. If they won't let us out of sight, then we need to assume that it's either for our safety or that they have a larger agenda here. Human traffickers will do everything they can to limit your movements and make you dependent on them. Already, we have been taken to a foreign country where we don't speak the language and can't ask for help. We also have the driver following us to make sure we don't run away. This could all be paranoia, but we need to keep our eyes open for anything suspicious. That night, they're taken to this industrial building where the game is going to take place. Cole feels that something is off, but ignores his instincts and gets out. Alexi here welcomes them, telling the group that everything they see inside might look real, but they're completely safe. 
Cole here starts live streaming the event, telling his viewers that they've been given special access to the escape room cameras and his fans will be able to watch everything that happens once they're inside. The security confiscates all their phones and plugs it into the broadcast room as the players wait to start the game. Suddenly, these huge men come in wearing gas masks. Alexei here informs the players that they'll be taken to an old Soviet prison, and the last man who was brought here never managed to escape. Now Cole must save his friends before time runs out, or else they'll be executed. But Cole here is determined to win. Okay. All of this is very impressive, and it might even be fun, but if you're thinking about the escape room, then you've already lost. We should be way more worried about whoever has control of our phone. This one device is the only thing that's guaranteeing our safety, because nobody would let us get hurt in front of 60 million witnesses. But if they turn the live stream off, anything could happen. Going inside without my phone is an absolute deal breaker for me, and if they can't accept it, then I'm getting on a plane and leaving. The guards throw a cloth over Cole's head and walk him into the prison, but he has no idea what he's in for. They lock him in a room as a timer starts counting down for one hour. He takes the cloth off his head to find a body on a slab, and this thing looks way too realistic. Cole here searches for clues on what he has to do, but the room has no hints and this cell door is locked shut. That's when he hears one of his friends call out to him, saying that they've been strapped to some kind of torture device with no way out, and he needs to think quickly to solve the puzzle before time runs out. Going back to the body, he sees an X marked on the man's stomach, and Cole here realizes there's only one way out of this room. He picks up the scalpel from a tray and begins to cut into the body. Reaching inside his guts, Cole here starts pulling out organs and feels something sharp is inside. Cutting it open, he finds the hidden key and uses it to unlock the cell door. Okay, these escape room designers spared no expense here. This body looks extremely lifelike, and it would honestly take me much longer to build up the courage to pick up the scalpel and start cutting. We should first be looking through the rest of the room for any hidden clues that might tell us more information. Sometimes the giant axe is only there to mislead you from the real clues, and we won't know unless we cover all our bases. If we don't find anything else, we should observe the body for any scars, and if there aren't any, then we can deduce that if there's something inside of him, it's probably going to be in his stomach. Now, frankly, we should be thanking the game designers here, because without the axe and with no scars on his body, we would have to search for clues in three possible places, his mouth, his stomach, or in his chamber of secrets. I don't know about you, but I'd rather cut a man's stomach open than go fishing around in the backside of a corpse. The stomach is actually much higher up than most people think, as it's positioned on the left side of the upper abdomen. Cole here cut way too low and had to search through all the organs to find what he was looking for. There could be anywhere from 15 to 25 feet of intestinal tract in the body and he wasted a lot of time feeling through it. I would have made an incision right around here and started my search from the stomach and this would have saved us as much as 5 to 10 minutes to use on solving the next puzzle. As he walks through, he finds his girlfriend locked inside of a glass box with no way out and she has the key. Looking further, he finds his friend Sam in another cell and strapped to an electric chair. The host Alexi tells him over the intercom that he needs to keep moving, as Cole here has less than 50 minutes to save his friends and escape. He finds the others, with one shackled to a bar and the other trapped inside an iron maiden. His friend notices the blood on his hands, and Cole tells them about the guy he cut open, but that's when they notice that these traps are beginning to move. He walks into a cell with gears on the floor and realizes this puzzle is connected to the Iron Maiden. He starts placing them on the wall, trying to connect them together in order to stop the traps. But when he finally completes the puzzle, the wheels suddenly speed up and the traps start closing faster. He realizes there's a second part of this puzzle and runs to the other cell to finish the job. He's running out of time, but when he connects the final gear, it stops the trap, saving his friends at the last second. The doors swing open, and now they have only 30 minutes left to get out alive. Okay, he managed to get the job done, but just barely. Ironically, this puzzle might be best solved by not using your brain at all. Now there's one huge advantage here because whenever he puts a wheel in the wrong hole, a buzzer sounds. If it were me, instead of trying to figure out how each wheel fits, I would put a wheel in every hole until one of them didn't sound the buzzer and I'll know that's where it belongs. But if we can't solve the puzzle quickly enough, we have another advantage to work with because these gears can be jammed. I would have stuck a loose brick or a broken pipe between the wheels to buy myself more time and assemble the puzzle without torturing my friends. Now, there's something even more important to consider here, because this was way too close a call to ignore, and we have to ask ourselves what would have happened if we didn't save our friends in time. I would be checking these spikes to see if they are real, and remove the gears again to see if the Iron Maiden actually closes, because if it does, then we need to seriously reevaluate the situation. That body in the first room might have actually been a real human, and these torture devices could have life or death consequences. In order to play this game correctly, we need to understand the stakes of the game first. 
they move on to the next cell where their friend is strapped to an electric chair. And to set her free, they have to solve this maze. At first it looks simple, but when Cole here moves this metal piece, he bumps it against the side and his friend in the chair suddenly jolts in pain. The slightest move could electrify their friend. Thinking it's all just a game, Dash here wants to turn and intentionally touches the sides, but the woman here screams in pain. She's really being shocked, but time is running out and they can't be careful anymore. He quickly solves the puzzle, ignoring the woman's screams, and finally gets the probe to the center of the maze. Okay, even the lightest nudge will barbecue your friend here, and all this adrenaline is going to make it impossible to keep your hand steady. We need a way to guarantee we won't touch the metal, and I would try to solve this problem by taking off my shirt and place it between the maze and the probe, blocking them from making contact. They could have easily moved the shirt with the probe until it reached the center, and now risk giving their friend permanent nerve damage. With the cell door swinging open, they free her from the electric chair, but she's fed up and wants to leave the game. They try to get Alexi's attention, but the host has gone silent. They all wonder why he's not answering, and Dash here confesses he barely knows the guy. He had no idea things would get this intense, and now they're trapped in an old Soviet prison with no choice but to complete the escape room on their own. Together, they go to solve the last trap, but realize the water inside of the tank is almost to the girlfriend's knees. She still thinks this is just a game and can't hear them through the glass. With the clock ticking, the group checks out the final puzzle and finds two jugs. Thomas here figures out that they need to pour four liters of water into this funnel using these two jugs and starts filling up the five liter. The tank is almost halfway full and that leaves them with little time to solve this. They pour the water into the smaller jug and go through a process of emptying it, filling the three liter jug and refilling them again. It's taking a long time and the girlfriend has to stand on her toes to avoid drowning. But Thomas here is able to finally get the four liters they need to solve this puzzle. They beat the challenge and run into the girlfriend's cell. Okay. They solved this puzzle the way they were told. Unfortunately, transferring all this water from one carboy into another over and over is going to waste a lot of time, and chances are it's still not going to give them a perfectly accurate measurement. This 5 liter carboy already has ridges evenly distributed across the side, and it would be much faster to use this to help quickly calculate how much volume of water each of these sections hold. With 5 liters roughly divided by 4 sections, we can assume there's close to 1.25 liters each, and that makes it pretty easy for us to eyeball the correct amount, dump it in, and see if it triggers the cell door to open. However, nobody realizes that this puzzle doesn't actually need to be solved at all. If they need 4 liters of water to open the cell door, then we can assume it's being triggered by the water's weight, so there's no reason that going over the weight limit would not trigger the mechanism. Simply put, 5 liters would do the job just as well as 4, so I would fill up the 5 liter carboy and dump the whole thing in, because because it's more than enough weight to do the job. Looking for a way to open the tank, they find a hatch on top. Using these ladders, they climb up them and try to force it open, but the hatch won't budge and they can't turn off the water either. She's going to drown, and Cole here begs Alexi to stop the game, but no one responds. Running to the other end of the hall, he grabs one of the gears and uses it to try and crack the glass. When that doesn't work, he breaks the metal framework on the hatch and opens the tank. The group takes her out and lays Aaron here on the ground just as the countdown reaches zero. She coughs up water and they're all relieved that she's still alive. They all agree that this game has gone too far and head to the exit using the girlfriend's key to unlock the door. The key works, but as they step through the door, it slams shut behind them. They freak out, but that's when Thomas here finds this wall stained with fresh blood. Cole here has had enough and grabs a chair leg, breaking the lock off the door, but are shocked to see the gangster from the nightclub is waiting for them. He executes Alexi's girlfriend before throwing them into his van, and they have no idea that the driver Alexi assigned to them is in on this too. Okay, this is a bad situation. With bags over our heads, we have no idea where they're taking us, but there's a silver lining here because they didn't drug us or knock us out. Since we're still conscious, we can use the shifting weight of the van to figure out when we're taking a left or right turn. In order to get a better feel for the changing directions of the vehicle, I would prop myself on my hands and knees as narrowly as possible. The less stability I have, the more I will feel the effects of each turn. If we memorize the route and count how many minutes or seconds between each change in direction, we can create a mental map of where they're taking us so that we can get help if the opportunity presents itself. Cole finds himself tied to a chair next to a table full of bloody medical tools. That's when this Russian man enters the room and tells him he's live streaming this to a private audience. The viewers have paid to watch him and his friends get tortured and killed. And Cole here realizes that this is no longer a game. In Soviet Russia, you don't beat puzzle, puzzle beat you. He's taken to another room where they chain him to a wall. Left alone, he rips the tape off his mouth but sees the Russian man appear on the monitor as he begins to live stream. Behind him is Samantha, who gets her eyes sliced up and her throat slit as Cole watches her die. 
furious, he slams his shackles on the bed frame and breaks them loose. Searching the room for an escape route, he spots a grate above the door. Okay, it's become absolutely clear that we are way in over our heads. But if we move past the panic and trauma of what's happening, we'll see a golden opportunity because something here doesn't add up. Earlier, Scarface here made a point to say that his viewers want to see people getting brutally tortured, and he's got a huge display of exotic and interesting weapons for the job. Instead, he kills her almost instantly, and it either tells me the man is lying or that he's a terrible businessman. If you were selling torture to a dark web audience, she would have her fingers cut off, eyeballs ripped out, and then be disemboweled to maximize watch time before she dies. Now this is where we can exploit the situation for an opportunity at escape. This guy is a very successful vlogger and has built a viewership of millions of viewers, so it's safe to say he might know a thing or two about engaging content. If I were him, I would ask to be the one to torture my friends instead and try to convince him that his audience would be more interested in watching me do it than him because it's just a lot more f***ed up. But the advantage of this is that if he goes for it, we can gain more control of the situation and could lead to a scenario where I have a weapon in my hand. We would be able to torture our friends in the least lethal ways possible, which is way better than what this guy would end up doing to them, all while looking for the perfect opportunity to attack the guards and escape. Obviously, it's a long shot, but we need to look for every possible way to gain more control of the situation and the outcome. And when you're chained to a wall, this can only come through clever manipulation. He's about to leave when he checks his pockets and finds that he still has the red card for the driver, which he now notices has a sequence of letters and numbers on it. Using the bed frame as a ladder, he climbs into the air vent and breaks out of his cell. But as he's crawling through, he hears his friend begging the torturer to spare him and watches the Russian man brutally cut both his arms off with a power saw. Cole here is horrified as another friend is killed, but he bumps the vent cover, alerting the torturer to his position and that he escaped. Okay, watching your friend have his arm sawed off is horrifying, but it's objectively better for one person to die instead of two. Vents are extremely loud because the sheet metal bends and shifts under your weight, and moving through them is an easy way to get caught here. But the more limbs your friend loses, the more chances he gives us to escape, because we can use the noise of the power saw to cover the sound of our movement in the vent. If we only crawl forward when the buzz saw is turned on, we can escape through the rest of the vent undetected and make our way out. It's brutal, but at least this way our friend isn't dying in vain, and we can tell his family he went out as a hero. Cole here crawls out of the vents and into another room, where he hides as the guards search for him. He sees his way out of here and sneaks around to avoid being spotted. Picking up a metal pipe, he throws it across the room and distracts the guards as they go check it out. Waiting for them to leave, Cole runs for the exit and finds his way blocked by a door with a keypad. It's locked shut, and he doesn't know the passcode, but notices a sequence of letters that match the ones on the red card. Using the numbers as a password, he breaks on through to the other side and finds a driver waiting here in the parking lot. The man reveals that he's actually been trying to help him and gives him the keys to his car, urging him to hide before it's too late. Staying out of sight, he watches as the driver is taken away by the guards. He gets into the car and although he knows he should escape, decides to go back and rescue his friends. He walks through this blue door and it locks behind him automatically, as he now has no choice but to move forward with his absolutely terrible plan. Okay, now is not the time to start being noble. We've been lucky enough to not only escape with our lives, but we've also been given the keys to this car. What he's not appreciating here is that not only is this his best chance at survival, but it's also his friend's best chance as well. I would turn on the GPS and race to the nearest police station to lead them back to the building so they can raid it. I'm sure his friends would agree with this strategy, because if I were this guy, I would definitely want the police saving me instead of my scrawny vlogger friend who could barely lift a metal gear. The man has no chance of saving his friends, and it's delusional to think that going back inside will improve anyone's chances of survival. But if we insisted on ignorant bravery, we should at least go in with something to attack with. There's a pile of cinder blocks here, and although they're heavy, they could be smashed over someone's head if we use stealth to approach them. He makes his way further in and finds Thomas here locked inside one of the rooms. He helps him up and together they venture deeper into the building. They walk into this room and hide behind some valves as one of the guards searches for them nearby. They wait for the guard to leave and sneak through a doorway, locking it shut behind them. His friend tries to get the handcuffs off, searching for something that can break them, but he bumps into a crate, making a loud noise that alerts the guards. Cole here sees a grate in the floor and they drop down into the crawl space, replacing the cover just as the guards break into the room. They sneak through the sub-levels until they find another grate and climb their way up. Hearing someone coming, they look for a way out, but there's nowhere they can run except for an empty elevator shaft. That's when a guard walks into the hall and runs at them as he fires his gun. Pushing Cole out of the way, his friend gets tackled by the guard and falls to his death. With only one person left to save, Cole takes the empty gun and goes searching for his girlfriend. Walking through the halls, he sees a gangster talking to the torturer and hides. He can't see who they're speaking to, so he moves in to get a better look and sees Alexi. He realizes he was working with the gangsters and set everything up so they could kill him and his friends. 
As the man walks away, Cole here follows him through the building and into a room where he finds him torturing his girlfriend. He points his gun at the gangster, but when the man holds a pistol to her head, he surrenders. But suddenly, his girlfriend knocks the Russian back and Cole loads a single bullet in his gun. He shoots at him, but this was a big mistake because the man doesn't die. With no bullets left, he can only watch as a torturer executes his girlfriend. Horrified, he's dragged away by the guards and thrown into another room, but Cole here just won't quit. He barricades the door shut and crawls through an air vent where Alexei is waiting for him on the other side. The man tries to explain, but Cole is having none of it and tackles the man to the ground before savagely beating him to death. All of a sudden, lights flood the room and all of his friends walk out very much alive. This was all an elaborate prank and everyone else was in on the joke, including his audience. But when they get closer and see that he's murdered Alexei, they're all shocked. Cole watches the video play, explaining how everything had been faked, and he breaks down realizing he's made the biggest mistake of his life. Okay, I gotta say, this was a pretty f***ed up prank, and these so-called friends shouldn't look this surprised. If they thought this was all real, they would have beaten Alexi to death just like we did. We had to experience everything as though it really happened, and this is going to take a lifetime of psychotherapy to deal with. I think I would prefer the experience be real than have to see my friends every day knowing that they scarred me for life. It's only fair that we embrace the trauma and kill everyone left to teach them a valuable lesson. In Soviet Russia, you don't pull prank. Prank pull you. What do you think? How would you beat No Escape? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and check out the How to Beat playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.